What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to do a comparison of the MP44S Optimus Prime toy version with the Magic Square MSO TC Light of Peace, their version of a toy version of Optimus Prime as well. Now these came out a couple months apart. This was from end of 2023. This is in April 24. So a little bit of distance. I'm actually surprised they <laughs> braved trying to put out a figure right when Takara was putting one out. But I think we're going to take a look at this. As I always mention with these comparisons, I try to be as objective as possible. But of course, there's subjectivity involved when you're comparing stuff like this. So if I pick one and you prefer the other, then you win. I really try to do these comparisons to help people decide what direction they want to go with their collection, including getting both of them if that suits them. So with that being said, let's get started. Let's start off with accessories. All right, and there are all the accessories they come with. They both come with a blaster. The Magic Square one is painted in this kind of metallic black paint. The Takara Tommy is just black plastic, but they both come with a blaster, very similar <laughs> in terms of design. They both come with the Energon Axe, slightly different coloring. And then we get down to these accessories. The Magic Square comes with these adapters for the MP40 and MP10 trailers. Now that's actually built in on this guy. The, the adapter is part of the accessory, but I'm going to give them credit at least for the MP10 adapter here. And I'll match that up with the flight stand adapter so you can attach them to the flight stand. And here's what you're left with. You end up with the G1 style Optimus Prime head with the silver paint and a blast effect. So we're going to give accessories over to Takara. Next, let's talk about the gimmicks on these two. And they are pretty similar. They both have the opening doors in the vehicle modes. They both have the opening chest with the matrix chamber. Not really anything different here in terms of the gimmicks. So we'll give them a tie on gimmicks. Next we'll talk about the accuracy on these two. And since these are not going for the cartoon look but the toy look, there's the G1 Optimus Prime next to them. And they both do different things better. For example, the MP44, in my opinion, the stickers on the arms, knees, and feet look a lot better and more closer to the car the toy than the Magic Square. These are just, they, they look good. I like that they're tampos because it, it doesn't feel as cheap as this, but it doesn't quite look like this. Also, the head, I think, they both have the yellow eyes. That looks pretty good. The MP44 is a little bit thinner of a head where this one's a little bit wider. The chest, I think, Magic Square did a little bit better because they got that translucent kind of, you know, smoked gray like the original toy, whereas the MP44, for whatever reason, they went the blue, which was the original. Uh, coming down to the waist and the legs, you do get the stickers for MP44. I didn't put them on, but they'll cover up these yellow bits. So if you want to emulate this chrome bumper look, you can on MP44. You can't do that here on the Magic Square. In addition, I think the, the chrome or the silver paint on the MP44 is a little bit shinier than the Magic Square. So I'm going to give accuracy over to MP44. I think they did a slightly better job overall with re recreating the G1 toy. Now let's talk about the sculpt. And sculpt is where I think Magic Square really, really nailed it. They've got no gaps or things sticking out on the MP44. You got red sticking out here and here. If you come to the side, you've got that backpack sticking out. On the back, here's where it's really pronounced, the back of the legs, multiple colors and breakups, lots of screw holes. It's just very unattractive. The sculpt is not very smooth. So I'm going to give sculpt over to Magic Square. I think they did a better job overall at making a nice, clean sculpt. Next, we'll talk about the paint on these two. It comes to paint, they're both pretty much 100% painted. MP44, you've got the silver and yellow on the head, red across the whole upper body, silver. The yellow here for the crotch is not painted, but that's probably on purpose to avoid paint scraping. And then silver here, blue here. The symbols here are stickers and not tampos, uh, but the rest of it is painted. For the Magic Square, same thing, the head is fully painted, the red is painted. The silver you see here, and then the blue, and then these are tampo symbols. The yellow on the crotch is painted, but that's really the only difference is the yellow is painted here where this is plastic color. So, so darn close. I'm just going to go with a tie on paint. Next, let's talk about the build quality on these two. 
And on the original MP44, I did have some build issues, uh, specifically with the knees and with some of the joints uh, on the elbows. This one doesn't seem to have that issue. It seems that they've corrected the knee ratchet issue, and they've corrected some of the issues with the with the elbows. So there may be people out there with issues. This copy that I have here doesn't have any. Same for the Magic Square. I don't have any QC problems or issues with this one. The materials are, are well done. It is a little bit lighter. It doesn't have any die cast in it. Uh, there's a little teeny tiny die cast in the Takara Tomy one. It is heavier, by the way. Uh, but since they're both problem free, no issues as far as quality and materials, I'm going to give them a tie on build. Next, let's talk about the articulation on these two. In order to do that, we'll articulate each one individually. Starting with MB44, the head is on a ball joint, up to there, down to there, side to side, rotates around. Head will lift up on this neck joint so you can get it down further and up a little further. Shoulder rotates down a ratchet joint, out to the side on a soft ratchet so you can get both ratchets up and out to the side. During my review, I forgot to show the butterfly joint, but it has a butterfly joint that gets all the way out to there so you can have the shoulders way across the body which is nice. Rotation at the bicep. You have a, I believe a single joint elbow, but it's got a little bit past 90 degrees. You have a rotation at the wrist. You have a individually articulated pointer finger at two pins, and then the rest of the fingers are at two pins, but they're, they're together, so they move together. And then the thumb is on a swivel. For the waist, you have a waist rotation. If you lift up and detach it from here, you can get more swivel out of it. Ab crunch gets you all the way down to there, back to there. Pretty much the full range on that ab crunch and swivel. Legs will kick up to there, back to there, out to the side, all on ratchets. Rotation of the thigh around a universal. Double jointed knee on that ratchet system, which I'm always worried about, but this one seems to work okay. And you have the knee that moves on its own, which is kind of a cool little, cool little gimmick there. You have ankle tilts, both directions, and then you have forward and backward movement. You also have uh, a toe tilt a little bit here. But there you go for MP44. Magic square, your head is on a ball joint. It's a double ball peg, so it gets way up and way down just due to that ball peg. You can move it side to side. You can also rotate side to side. Rotates all around. You can move the ears on this one. This one, the ears are fixed. So you can pose the ears if you want to. Rotation at the shoulder, out to the side on a friction joint. Gets you all the way up to there. Um, you can also lift it on this joint. So same thing as MP44, you can get it there. Butterfly joint gets you out all the way up to here and out to the side. So same thing as MP44. Rotation at the bicep. It is a pretty tight joint. We also have a rotation here at the elbow. So a slightly extra joint there. You have a double jointed elbow on this one. So that's a little bit extra. You get more movement out of that because there is a double joint there on this hinge. Rotation at the wrist. You do have individually articulated fingers. You also have in and out movement. Actually, I forgot to mention this one does have in and out movement at the wrist, so that is the same. But what's different is the fingers. This one has individually articulated fingers at all four and the thumb. So you can get really any pose out of these. So you get a little bit more on that hand and the double jointed elbow. As far as the waist, you have a rotation here. You have a double jointed ab crunch. You get you all the way down, all the way back. Pretty much the same as MP44, implemented differently, but works and executes the same. For the hips, you have legs will kick up to there, back to there, and there's a, a hip skirt on the back as well, just like MP44. Out to the side on a, on a ratchet as well. Rotation at the thigh around a universal. You have a double jointed knee ratcheted just like MP44. And let's get this back. We have ankle tilts, ankle pivot forward and backward, toe tilt, heel tilt. So you get a little bit extra here on the toe because of the way it's designed. 
So because of the extra movement at the elbows, which is a double joint, the fingers, and at the toes, just by a hair, I'm going to give it over to Magic Square. They definitely have a, just a bit more articulation in the extremities. All right, next we'll talk about the transformation and engineering. And I've done this review before, this comparison, so it's not going to be a surprise, but I've never liked the transformation on MP44. I've done it so many times, probably over a dozen times. Still don't enjoy it. Even on this copy, I just did it for, for this review. And while the Magic Square is just a delight, it's so much fun, it's so easy, there's very few steps. For a Masterpiece Optimus, it really is kind of surprising how simple and fun the transformation is, and yet how effective both modes are. If you get to the Alt mode, which we'll take a look at in a little bit, it's very clean. You know, there's not a lot of kibble on the back of the MP44, there's a lot of stuff going on, and that really impressed me, so the engineering, on a Magic Square also, I think it presses me more than the MP44. So I'm gonna give both transformation and engineering over to Magic Square. All right, and there they both are in their alt modes. And since these are both going for the toy look and not the tune look that we always look at, let's bring in the G1 toy. And this guy is pretty old, he's been through a lot, but good enough to compare. And you can see they all have the chrome grill and bumper, chrome headlights. I do think the Takara looks a little bit closer because it's got the double headlights, the dual versus the single circle, which is more of a tuned thing. They both have the silver stripe along the side. The MP44 one is actually broken up right here, but that is actually how this one looks. This one's more consistent throughout the side, but just based on the design. Coming to the side, you can see the Original toy had the chrome wheels and the chrome smokestacks. The Takara did a nice job on their chrome wheels. Nice and shiny with rubber tires. The Magic Square, it does have rubber tires, but the chrome is kind of this worn chrome. It's not shiny. So that's a little bit of a difference there. Coming to the back, you can see that the Takara definitely reproduced that look of the sticker. It's actually sculpted in and painted detail for the back to emulate this. The Magic Square didn't do that. It is on the back of the foot, I guess the front of the foot, but it should have really been painted right here on the top of the toe. Um, I do think a little bit uglier back here, but as far as the look of the truck overall, I think Takara nailed the look of the toy better. And overall, it's a little bit more consistent as far as, you know, between tune and toys. I'm going to give the vehicle mode over to Takara. Now, they both have the same gimmicks here with the opening doors. You can open them up. Now, the Takara one has a little space to put a character. You know, you can put a little minifigure in there. But they both have that, so... And they both can attach to trailers if you want them to, so... No differences there, but based on the looks, I'm going to give it over to Takara. I think they got a little closer to that toy version of Optimus Prime. All right, next we'll talk about the cost on these two figures. And normally I use the Ages 3 and up prices, but unfortunately they didn't have this figure on their website. So I had to go to another one. I went to the Chosen Prime. And I know <laughs> if I use Shozy Store, these prices are going to be different. But I like to use the U.S. retail prices because they tend to be more consistent. They don't tend to monkey with them. Either way, the MP44 is $220 retail. The Magic Square TC is $190 retail. I have seen this for a lot less. It doesn't really matter because it's still going to win on cost. And the final factor here in the comparison is the Member's Choice category, where I ask my members which one they prefer just based on their own personal preference, no other factors. And you can see from the score there that the Magic Square is going to win the Member's Choice category. So final thoughts on the comparison. You can see the score there. And Magic Square is going to win by one point really close. Uh, but I'm not surprised. I really like this figure a lot. Uh, I've already I've had the original version. Now I have the toy version. All of them are pretty darn good. Now, that's not to say this one's bad. There's nothing really wrong with this one. I really This one's pretty good too. Now, this is better than the original MP44 because it fixes some of the issues they had on that figure. 
Um, also, it tends to just shine. Once you put the stickers on, it's a little bit of a pain to put them on. But once you put them on, it really does look good, you know, with those stickers. So you can't really go on with either of these. Now, my personal preference is this one because it's just a little bit cleaner in, in both modes, especially the vehicle mode. And I like the transformation. It's just very fun. I sit here and transform it, especially for things like this where I'm doing a versus. Now, kind of the elephant in the room is this figure. The Missing Link version is so darn good. And one of the reasons it's so good is they sculpted in the detail and then painted on top of it. These guys could have stood to do that too, you know? Instead of doing the stickers or the tampo, this is something really unique. I haven't really seen a lot, you know, sculpting in the detail and then painting it on top to make it look like a sticker. That was really cool to me. That was a very surprising thing when I got this. So this is actually my favorite toy version of Optimus Prime, but it's not an MP scale, so it didn't factor in here in this comparison. I just wanted to mention it. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Dr. Diecast for sending this for review, and we'll see you next time.